there will be some more arriving that have booked in. Uh, if you are watching on Zoom, it's good to see you all. I can see some of your faces here in front of me. Morning, Anne Newing, Ian, Val, Collins, good to see you. Um, well, this is a bit of uh, a new experience for us to gather back in the building after so long. Um, and it kind of feels good, but, but weird at the same time, seeing you people sit here in masks. Um, but if you're at home watching this on Zoom, you have the advantage that you can sing out loud. You can worship as loud as you want in your own living room. Um, unfortunately, we can't do that here, but we can enjoy the singing. Um, the Illings have arrived. Illings, we've reserved you seats in the middle because you are so special. So come and sit in the middle. Um, and we're going to worship. It's so, I was just thinking this morning about how uh, weird it is to sing people in masks all the time. And um, when I go around the supermarket, Normally, I bump into people all the time that I know, but right now I cannot recognize people wearing their masks and you're kind of these unknown faces behind masks. My kids love it because it means I don't stop and talk to people all the time because most of the time they're just saying, oh, come on, let's get on with it. But I don't know if you have that kind of sense of we are just at the moment in this weird experience of not knowing and seeing people, but actually God sees us and knows us and even whatever is going on in the world around us, he knows us. And I just wanted to read this verse from Psalm 46 uh, over us this morning. That God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Do you know, there's lots and lots of times it says in the Bible, do not fear. So it says, we will not fear through the earth gives way though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea though its waters roar and foam though the mountains tremble at its swelling there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God the holy habitation of the most high God is in the midst of her she shall not be moved God will help her when morning dawns the nations rage the kingdoms totter he utters his voice and the earth melts this is who we're worshipping this morning. He who he utters his voice and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The Lord of hosts is with us this morning. The Lord of hosts is with you if you're watching at home on Zoom. So come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow, shatters the spear. He burns chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God and I will be exalted amongst the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And Jesus, we come to you. You are our saviour. You are our redeemer. We know that we can be still in the midst of all that is going on around us and know that you are God. You know that you are the one who has set us free. You are the one that makes us not fear because our foundation is in you. Our salvation is in you. Jesus, we worship you. We love you. We love you. Come, Holy Spirit, and just be amongst us this morning. Be in our homes as we gather together online as well. One body, one spirit, one faith. Jesus, come and receive from the King of Kings this morning. Come and exalt his name this morning. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Just encourage you at home as well. If you want to share, you can message the, the Zoom host and uh, we'll be able to hopefully make that work at the end of worship. So Spirit of God, come. Let the name of Jesus be exalted on high this morning. King of kings and Lord of lords. Okay, let's worship. Over to the band. Okay, should we stand? If you're at home as well, actually standing really helps. It's intentional. Let's praise this morning. Let's praise the God who never changes. It's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. In a time where we live in constant changes, he never changes. So let's just praise him this morning. 
greater than we can imagine far above thank you lord
Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within of what I look and see in there. You made an end to all of my sin because the sinless Savior died. We 
all the beginning and the end. We raise our hands in worship. We give you all the glory, Lord. We worship you. Fix my eyes upon the cross, reaching out with all my God, I'm letting go to start again. I need your love, that's why I'm here. Waiting. Outside my life, but a while I'm here, I give my all. You are my peace within the storm. Here at the cross, I find my love. Hey.
Jesus, we declare you are greater, greater than it all, and we fix our eyes upon you this morning. We fix our eyes upon the one who sees beginning and end. Lord, all the truths that we've sung this morning, you are the alpha and the omega. You are the beginning and the end. Nothing surprises you, God. I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful that I can rest in the knowledge of the living God, the one who sits on high. I I rest in the knowledge that I am saved by the one who is sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us right now. I rest in the knowledge that we are joining in now with a chorus of, of millions of angels singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Jesus, we love you. Fix your eyes upon the king this morning. Fix your eyes upon the one who knows and sees you. He says, be still and know that I am God. Whatever your circumstance, whatever you might be feeling right now, be still and know that I am God. That's what he says to us. We need to believe what is written in his word. He says, have no fear. Believe, and it says, sin has no dominion over me. He is mighty. He is awesome. He is wonderful. Fix your eyes upon him this morning. He's your king. He's your friend. He's your savior, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, that you come and meet with us. We can come to you daily, hourly, minute by minute, we can come to you, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just as we come to an end of our worship time, we're just going to have some people share um, from online um, I've lined up a few people. Paul McCormack, maybe if you could go first as you pray for us. I can see them on my screen. <clears throat> go on, Paul. Okay. Thanks, Ian. I was just going to uh, read a few verses from Psalm 122 because I think it's appropriate. And uh, we heard from Psalm 46 earlier. And Jenny on the chat here was reminding us at the end of that uh, psalm about that God is our fortress, and I just want to pick up on that theme. Psalm 122, I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord. 
according to the statute given to Israel. There the thrones of, for just judgment stand, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. Citadels are like fortresses. For the sake of my brothers and friends, I will say, peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Father God, wherever we're gathered as our tribe, whether we're in our church building, whether we're in our individual homes, I pray for the peace of Jerusalem will be upon each of us, that we would know you, God, as our fortress and as our citadel, as our strong tower in these strange times in which we live, in the strange ways in which we have to meet. You are the same God. You are a God we can trust. You are a God who is totally secure whose walls are founded and firm and will not shake. When everything around us is shaking, you do not shake. Thank you, God. Praise your name. Amen. Amen. Uh, and the Manic Tyler household are going to share something for us as well this morning. So, Jeeves and Catherine, over to you. So, um, during worship, I was just reminded of we've just moved into our new house and we're currently going through the process of unpacking boxes and throughout unpacking these boxes I keep finding things that we've been given and people have like just given to us and I've completely forgotten we've got them and I was just reminded of the parable of the talents the fact that actually it's so easy to be given stuff and that God gives us gifts but then sometimes we put them away and we don't use them and I really feel that God's actually going you might not be physically in the church but you've still got these gifts to use do not hide yeah. them away and I think God just really wants us to just be encouraged by the fact that he's given us these gifts for a mm. purpose so we need to use them and so yeah just get using your gifts Don't yeah so Heavenly Father I just want to thank mm. you that you are a God that loves to give us gifts yeah. you are such a lavish God that you just pour it out even when we put them away in the cupboard or we put them to one side yeah. you still give us these things and heavenly father i just commission the church to unpack their gifts yeah. that they've been given and go out and use them because we don't have to use them in the church building we can use them through our text messages through the people that we meet up in a group of six with through being in the shops we can meet them and use them wherever we go yeah. so heavenly father i just pray that actually we will just awaken the gifts that you have given them and we won't put them to the side. Yes. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Good to see you guys. Um, and one more uh, this morning. I'm going to ask Ian Lane if he could pray because it's always good to have Ian Lane. Church isn't church without Ian Lane praying. So Ian, maybe you could, um, I haven't lined him up. So this is, you just need to unmute yourself, Ian, and then we can hear you pray. Hopefully this will work. Or you'll have another Ian that prays. No, no, not quite. Still can't hear you, Ian, unfortunately. We give you. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, go on, go on Ian. Ian. <laughs> go for Father, it, Ian. We thank you. We thank you that you're here with us, whether we're at home or whether we're in, in Hope Church. And, and uh, you, we know that you love us and care for us. And as we uh, are about to hear your word, open our ears, Lord, and um, anoint our ears so that we hear the key words that you want us to hear. They might be different for different people, but help us to be focused, help us to uh, just be ready to hear what you're saying. But beyond that, help us to do the things that you, you're, you're calling us to do. You're a great God, and uh, we belong to your loving family. We're your children, and we rejoice in you. Amen. 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 
that was um, fun. Um, okay, just before Andre comes up and uh, speaks this morning as he carries on in our Luke series, there's not really many notices, just that we will carry on like this for the next few weeks as long as we can. As I said, we will be um, sending out links to the Connect groups um, and they'll have up until the Wednesday to sign up and then it will be going out to the rest of the church to fill the 30 odd spaces to come in flesh. So everyone will get a chance and we'll be keeping an eye on who hasn't been. And just so we really give up everyone an opportunity to be here in the flesh. Um, so that's kind of what's gonna happen over the next few weeks, but just be patient with us as we're figuring this out. We, we don't really know what we're doing at the moment. We're literally making it up as we go along. So, but, um, Hopefully this is going to work for the next few weeks, um, but who knows what is around the corner, but God does. So we need to keep trusting in him and not fearing. Um, also next week, we will not be having a live speaker. We'll be having Dave Holden, who is actually going to carry on speaking in our Luke series. So but it's going to be a, a recorded message that will be up on the screen. So Dave Holden's going to speak next week. So uh, just to let you know about that, just encourage you to just keep connected with one another, keep speaking to friends, connect group. If you haven't been to your connect group for a while, can I encourage you to go to that? Um, it's really worth staying connected in this time, um, in this very, very strange season. So let's welcome Andre as he comes and speaks. Thank you very much. Is that good? Can you hear me? I had the privilege to be here. Welcome to all the scattered and masked people and all those scattered and unmasked people somewhere out there. It's a privilege to be here. You know, when we came in this morning um, and, and Ian was just saying, be patient with us. I mean, we're just making it up as we go along. But, you know, it was such an encouragement to just see everyone um, just doing their bit and making sure that um, as a church community, we can be together in whichever way it is, even if we are. Uh, far away from from each other. So um, um, and oh, the worship! What a what a privilege to just be here uh, this morning. Um, even even just being in the space and uh, and having that sense of community uh, again here. So whenever your chance comes up to be in the building, I would really encourage you to sign up and um, and just join here. Um, but that doesn't mean that we are not together, even when we are far apart and many people are. Uh, in different places. So it's a, it's a privilege for me to, um, to share some uh, thoughts with you again today. I've, um, I've labeled the talk for today, uh, we are different, or are we? Um, and as Ian has said, we carry on in the series of Luke, just for those of you that are new, the Bible has um, 65 other books as well, but we're sticking with Luke for the moment, and we're getting a lot of Amazing, amazing teaching from the Lord um, about that. So we're going to read from Luke 15 today. So if you want to find that uh, in your Bibles, it will be up on the screen as well. Uh, Luke 15, verse 1 to 10 is where we will be focusing on today. Okay, well, let's leave that, read that. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, rejoice with me. I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. just want to pray for us at uh, this juncture. Father, I pray that, as Ian has prayed as well, 
that you will speak to each one of us today and that you will give us a clear word. Father, I pray that our ears will be open and that our hearts will receive your message. Remove all distracting thoughts, Father, from our minds and let our spirit connect with you in a new way today, in a way that we can hear your truth afresh today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Right, let's step through the scriptures as, as we've read it and uh, discover what the Lord wants to reveal uh, to us today. So the first two verses, not many words, but actually a very powerful part of the scripture. So if I repeat that for you, now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. And then the contradiction in verse 2, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Now throughout the writings of Luke, we see this conflict. It's always there, the Pharisees and the religious leaders uh, not liking how Jesus really wants to spend time with the tax collectors and the sinners. Jesus is always reaching out to them. Jesus is constantly emphasizing the fact that eternity is for everyone. It's not only for those devoted religious um, followers of rules, and it is for everyone. It takes me back to Luke 14 that we looked at over recent weeks, and uh, where Jesus again, I mean, Luke 14 starts with where Jesus um, goes to dinner uh, with a prominent Pharisee. And you remember the story when he arrives there and there's, a, there's someone that's sick, uh, that needs a healing, and it's on a Sabbath. And Jesus talks to them and challenges them even in that scenario. So even when Jesus goes to the Pharisees, he doesn't hold back to be controversial in what he challenges with them. On that day, he says to them, would, would one of you, if a child or even an animal fall in a well, not go and save them? And then he heals the man on the he carries on to really challenge them in terms of how they move around society. I mean, he talks about who do you invite for dinner? Do you only invite those people that can return the favor? Or do you only invite those people that can enhance your status in society? That's the challenge that he, that he is putting them. He's challenging their prejudice um, in that. He also, and then he, he gives them the parable of the banquet in, at the end of, um, of um, chapter 14, where he then talks about everyone that's been invited, but then it's actually the people from the street corners and the alleys that attend the banquet because the guests had something better to do. And then Ian brought us to the last part of that where it was really challenging us about the cost of discipleship. And I will come to that a bit more uh, a bit later. But, but right at the end, in verse 35 of chapter 14, Jesus then says, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Now that is exactly where we pick up Luke 50. That's what the tax collectors and the sinners are doing. They're responding to exactly that, what Jesus has said. Let those who want to hear come. And they know they can come. They will not be judged. Um, they can come and listen to what, what Jesus wants to, to give them. The Pharisees do exactly what Jesus told them not to do. They have prejudice, again, about the fact that Jesus spends time with, um, with the sinners, the tax collectors. So Jesus is different. And the question is, are we different? Over the last few weeks, I think Herman referenced it, and there was a word brought at the, uh, at the gathering last week from Romans 12, verse 1 to 2. Let me read that to you again. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and to prove what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Be different. Be different. Now, Jesus then carries on and he, and he tells two parables. And both of these parables um, start with a, uh, what I will call an interesting or potentially a troubling question. One of the other translations actually introduces the parable um, of the sheep with the words, which one of you would not? And the parable of the woman, what woman will not? Um, well, frankly, no one would, don't you think? If you listen to that story, it just doesn't make sense. Um, I'm a businessman, I'm an accountant, and if I have 99 and one is lost, I think 
I'll live with that. It just doesn't make sense to leave 99 in the field with the risk of losing more of them just to go after that one, that silly one that has wandered off somewhere. And then even when he finds it, he gets everyone around to say, let's celebrate. I found the sheep that was lost. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever there's celebration around, there's eating and drinking going on. And as a South African, that often means a barbecue or a bride. So I think you can hear the irony in this. A little lamb chop is always good on a roll. Now, let's think about the woman that finds this one coin. I mean, she goes through the same trouble of finding this one out of ten. Now, uh, the Bible scholars tell us that was about a day's wage. So I guess that is something to worry about if you've lost that amount. But then again, the story goes that she celebrates and she invites people around to celebrate with her. Now, I, I guess she was treating them perhaps two coins worth of a party. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. But that's exactly the point. Jesus is different. Are we different? Romans 12 verse 2 again says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And for me, therein lies the core of this message, core of this, these two parables that Jesus is telling uh, his people. Throughout Scripture, God shows his love and his compassion for every individual, every human being, each one of us in this building today, each one of us dialing in from anywhere in the world. God cares about every single human being. So let's just translate the story of the sheep and the coin perhaps to something that is then more relevant to us. Think about the people you know. Think about their life in the context of eternity. How many of them are lost? Is it one out of ten? Two? Three? Perhaps nine? And do we care about that? Why don't we leave everything behind, the 99? Why don't we leave all of that to go and find that one person that is lost? Last week, um, or the week before actually, Ian spoke about the cost of discipleship. Um, if you remember that last part in Luke 14 where it's really challenging. It's about leaving your family behind. Don't do those things. Go and commit yourself completely to the cause. And he, he quoted some um, uh, words from John Stott, a writing about basic Christianity. I want to read that again for us, because there's some real um, food, stuff for food for thought in, in, that, um, in that piece of writing. The Christian landscape is strewn with the wreckage of derelict, half-built towers, the ruins of those who began to build and were unable to finish. For thousands of people still ignore Christ's warning and undertake to follow him without first pausing to reflect on the cost of doing so. The result is a great scandal of Christendom today, so-called nominal Christianity. In countries to which Christian civilization has spread, large numbers of people have covered themselves with a decent but a thin veneer of Christianity. They have allowed themselves to become somewhat involved Enough to be respectable, but not enough to be uncomfortable. Not enough to be uncomfortable. Their religion is a great soft cushion. It protects them from the hard unpleasantness of life while changing its place and shape to suit their convenience. While changing its place and shape to suit their convenience. Do not conform to this world. He carries on to say, no wonder the cynics speak of hypocrites in the church and dismiss religion, religion as escapism. The message of Jesus was very different. He never lowered his standards or modified his conditions to make his call more readily acceptable. He asked his first disciples, and he asked every disciple since, to give him their thoughtful and total commitment. Nothing less than this will do. Jesus asked his first disciples, and he has asked every disciple since, 
to give him their thoughtful and total commitment. Nothing less than this will do. So where does that leave us today? What does it mean in terms of us leaving everything behind to find the lost? What does thoughtful and total commitment mean to each one of us uh, as we go around our daily tasks? Do we think that someone that's missing out on a personal relationship with Jesus is missing out on something that is real? And I was just struck by the worship this morning. It was, it was so intense, just feeling the fellowship of God, the reality of being in his presence. Now, when we feel something like that, when we experience something that is so precious to us, what do we do? Um, don't we tell other people about it? Don't we want to share with people my joy um, that I experience from that? When I go out from here, I mean, there's just something that wants to flow over and wants to speak to people about it. I mean, we do that with pictures and jokes and everything that we share on social media. Why don't we talk more about Jesus, about salvation, about eternal life? Jesus uses every opportunity to bring that into a conversation. Doesn't matter the place and time. Doesn't matter what people will think of what he's telling them. He uses that. My challenge, as, and I'm, I'm, I'm struck by the fact that the last time I stood here, I was talking to you guys about the banquet and going to the banquet. And um, why is that real to us or not real to us? What is real life? We spoke about eternity. We spoke about heaven. Um, and we said, well, heaven can only be real if hell is real. We spoke about what does that mean? Is it real to us? Or have we fallen into the comfort of the life we're living, that it's not important to us to make other people aware of the certainty of eternity. Every religion in the world has a form of thinking about life after death. And we know what Jesus has done for us. He's brought us our salvation. Ever since sin destroyed that union between God and, and his creation, he's been working all the time to restore what was lost. We see that through the ages, and it's written up in the Bible, everywhere God is trying to get his people back to him. He steps in to bring correction. He invites. And very often people don't respond with disastrous results for them. Now, all the prophecies and teachings of Jesus urge us to prepare, even these parables, urge us to be part of that restoration of the creation. In the beginning, God was there. He wandered with Adam and Eve. In, in the garden. Uh, after, after the fall, God was still there. He was there in the form of the cloud uh, when the Israelites were moving uh, during the day and the fire and night, and he was in the temple. In the New Testament, Jesus comes. He's physically on earth with the people. And when he goes to prepare our place for eternity, the Holy Spirit comes as God with us. All of it is just telling us that God wants more people to experience what we experience and to know the certainty of an eternal life. And then when all of that has gone through and we come into eternity, God will dwell amongst us again. The question for us today is, what does the word of God stir in my and in your heart today? And as I was preparing this, I mean, I, I, I do think that the Lord is talking to Andre. Because every time I get an opportunity to stand here, he talks to me about that. What are you doing about the people that you engage with on a daily basis? The people that you work with? The people that you are at school with? Do you just go on and be different on Sunday, but be like the world on Monday to Saturday? When I say that today, who are you thinking of that you know needs God's love? Do I care for the lost in the way Jesus did, and he still does today. You know, when Jesus grabbed Paul's attention on the road to Damascus, um, Paul, which was then still called Saul of Tarsus, asked him, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? I'm going to ask that we use a bit of time to be quiet, and I've asked, I should just, just play some music for us while we do that.
I want to just give a bit of time for each one of you, just where we are, to sit and think about this question. What do you want me to do, Lord? Which lost sheep do you want me to search for? Which lost coin should I find? What 99 things do I need to leave behind in my quest for the lost soul? What do you want me to do, Lord? Let's just spend some time in the presence of our Father with those questions. Trust that the Lord has shown you something. I trust that the Lord has given you a name. Trust that the Lord has, in that moment, pointed you to something that may have been on your heart uh, for a while. I want to encourage you to not only keep it to yourself. It helps to tell someone else what the Lord has challenged you with. And then we can keep each other accountable. We can support each other in prayer. Um, it doesn't need to be a big thing. We are different because Jesus is different and we belong to him. He has saved the world. We just need to make them aware of that. Let us be his hands and feet and his lips among the people that are around us. Let us treasure every moment that we can spend in his time in, in, in presence with Jesus. Let us escape from everything that entangles us to have less time with our Savior. The more time we spend with Jesus, the more we will see what he sees and hear what he hears. The more time we spend with him, our hearts will be more in tune with his desire to find the lost. May God bless you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Lord. Amen. Okay, well, that brings an end to our service, but I just want you to consider that really what Andre has challenged you with uh, as you go into this week. What is God calling you to? Uh, what is he calling you to, to surrender? Um, and just be really seeking God. Uh, I really feel... The challenge of God, actually, as we've looked into uh, 
these verses, the scriptures that we've been reading over the last few weeks in Luke, God is really challenging us to, to be true followers of Jesus. Um, so I just urge you to really prayerfully consider what is God calling you to? What is he prompting you and nudging you about in these days? So um, thank you all for joining us online as we draw our service to a close. Um, and hopefully I'll see you in the flesh in the next couple of weeks. And thank you all for coming um, in the flesh. It's been great to see you all. And thank you to all the band. They've worked really hard this week in terms of getting it all ready. And um, Also, I just want to give a, a personal thanks to my good friend, Dave Gadd, who is a bit of a legend and has really made most of this happen this week. Um, he's arranged all the tech and the band and everything else. So big thanks to my friend Dave up on the uh, balcony. <laughs> But there, there ends uh, the service, and I hope to see you soon. Um, for those of you in the building, if you on the left here could start to leave first out of the exit, and then the middle, and then you guys have to leave right at the very end. Sorry about that. <clears throat>